Happy Monday, everybody. Uh, Happy Monday. We're, we're doing the weird hey, things podcast. Uh, uh, oh. what, what's, what's up with these kids not going to school all week? What, yeah. They, 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 get, they get 12 days off? Like, How dare they? When, they should be working all the time. Exactly. Eight hours a day. I mean, 40 hours a week. We at least show up Monday and Tuesday. 60 weeks a year. Y'all know they retitled the British National Anthem? Yeah. Y'all know that? You know, originally. Hey, hey I, I read a book okay. once where uh, uh, the authorities just decided to change words out of nowhere and acted like everybody should play along. It was called 1984. Huh. Huh. We've always sang "God Save the King." I mean, that was the original yeah. song, wasn't it? Yeah. Exactly. We've always been singing it. We never sang uh, another song. You know, when Elton John changed the lyrics of "Candle in the Wind." We went through the same thing with Justin. <laughs> adding, adding that. Uh... Now, if they made it a marketing opportunity, and they were like, like, oh, like for the first time ever, we're gonna debut "God Save the King" in in your lifetime, <laughs> like then I would have respect. But no, they're just gonna change it and act like nothing happened. It was I'm literally never "God Save the King" in any of our lifetimes. Yeah. Not ever once. Not ever. And now all of a yeah. sudden everybody pretends that it's normal. Weird weird fact, the queen was a lot older than us, Bryce. Yeah. That's what I, yeah. Oh no. That's I, weird. I think three out of four panelists are on the same page. No, I'm, I'm with Justin. I, yeah. think, I think it's yeah. weird. Oh no. I think it's weird. Now we're 50-50? <laughs> what is so, this, a democracy? Wait, Prince Charles, what, what, what message were we seeing when King Charles, uh, sorry, Mr. Barkley, yeah. uh, when, when King Charles steps down from the plane and they start saying, God save the queen? Uh, I don't that's know. Fine. That, that's fine. That's the song that what, everybody no, sings. But again, that's not even the song. That's like it, saying- It would be very why, confusing. Okay, 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 parallel here. It would be the equivalent of like, why are they trying to remove- uh, under God from the Pledge of, Pledge of Allegiance because it was never in the Pledge of Allegiance. It was added in anti-communist hysteria in the 1950s. But yes, Justin, that was the way they, it but was said for 60 years. That's so exactly you're defining my the point because between... we know that. And, and we're like, wow, that was weird. Wait, All I'm on. pointing out is that it's weird. It's and weird. that it's Orwellian. No. Oh. And that this is how... This is how it's Orwellian for them to change it, or yes. that that it's and then publicly... act like and then have everybody act like it's not okay. a big deal. Uh, uh, maybe it's the last part of your sentence that that is not a shared experience. Why 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 is everybody? What is who is everybody and how are they acting? I'm gonna define it by you and everything you've said since I brought up this very salient and entertaining point. <laughs> uh, okay. Uh, uh. I don't think it's weird. I think it's uh, as much as I say, uh, hell, uh, whatever. Uh, I, 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 if you want to get into checkmate, atheist, politics. checkmate. Okay. Why are we fighting? We just started I, I the don't day. Know. I don't know. You it's started it. You could have just played swing. along. You could have just played something. along. Hello, everybody. We're going to do the Weird Things podcast in just a minute. How's everybody doing? Hey, man. It's, it's good raining. to be back. We're getting water. It's good getting to be all back. watered up. Yeah, holy here. crap. Oh, I, yeah. I don't remember it raining this much last year. It, 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 it was dry last rain? year. Normally, yeah. October is when the rains come back. Uh, last but, year was unseasonably did, hot. Did. Yeah, it was. It was It was, It was. was more temperate later. And then, like, January, it got super, super cold. Yeah. Yeah. This time, it's been, it's been yeah. rainier. Do, do, you, do you know what other major change had been made to the Pledge of Allegiance, by the way? I didn't know this. I was just looking this up. What's that? Uh, there was a guy, Bellamy, who had his version of the, which was used, I guess, the most likely version of it. Um, you didn't put your hand on your heart. Guess what you did with your hand? Uh, Saluted. You put, you, they, you clasped them over your crotch. You held up. They changed a, it. 19, they changed it in 1941. Oh wait! Did oh you, did no, you do a no, salute? yeah, no, yeah. You put, you put, you did the old arm oh. out, yeah. <laughs> yeah, just to say hello, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Another thing they took from us. Yeah, that was unfortunate. Somebody ruined it. Thanks, yeah. Hitler. Yeah, they uh, they shouldn't have changed. I'm it. never. I will never say thank you to Hitler, not once. Yeah. Well, Bryce, remember Hitler? I mean, killed I don't Hitler. know. I could think of one moment. Like when he put a gun in his mouth. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I tend to not thank people for killing themselves either. It turns out. I tend okay. not... <laughs> so you wanted him to live? Takes. 
you you wanted him to live, Bryce? Why do oh, you? No, no, don't. Okay. I All wanted right. him to be killed. <laughs> yeah. And what did you he do denied, about it when it was time? The opportunity for our American Why soldier didn't you enlist? To to shoot. Uh, I was waiting for my father to be born, I believe. <laughs> yeah. A likely story. Well, coward, draft dodger. Statistically. <clears throat> Hi, everybody. We'll get started in a minute. It's a good pre show. One out of four panelists agrees. This is a good one. <laughs> This is, this, is a, this is a good one. There's something weird in this. Okay, okay, banana? No. Yeah, and you know, I think it's just the delicious taste of banana. All right. Uh, Nainers, as they call them. Is that what they're calling them now? Nainers, yeah. Nainers, not Nainers. Nanners? Nainers, yeah. Nainers? Uh -huh. Not Nanners. No. Nainers. I mean, if you're, you know, getting festive, sure. No one has any issue with that. Z we care about God save the queen, but not no, bananas they, versus bananas. No, Brian understands that I'm a sand trap, and if, if he just puts a, a toe in, then I'll suck him in with nonsense because that's the mood I'm in right now. He's right. His silence is correct. <laughs> it is. It is. It is a condemnation that I deserve. All right. Uh, well, Andrew, you you want to do some more things? Sure. All right. Cool. Well, we're recording there and there. All right. I'll count you in, Andrew, to start the Weird Things podcast in three, two. Hello, and welcome to the Weird Things podcast. I'm Andrew Me, joined by Brian Brushwood. Ahoy! Bryce Castillo. Hello! And our guest panelist, Justin Robert Young. So nice to see you. Hello! Welcome to the show, Justin. Conspiracy theorist. Hello. <laughs> Uh, Do we want to bring hey, this on uh, the show or not? No, no. no. Oh, okay, we're not. God, no, uh, we're not. Unbelievable. Uh, maybe later. Uh, <laughs> hey, uh, uh, I want you all to pull out your wall imaginary wallet. Pull out your imaginary wallet. Okay. Uh, oh, I'm so glad you said the imaginary wallet because that one yeah. is much fuller. <laughs> than yeah. Take my out, take out wallet. eighty. Take out eighty-five bucks. Take out eighty-five bucks. Got yep. it. Of okay. course, I have it. Eighty-five. Yeah. Okay. 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 Take eighty-five. Take out your lighter. Uh -huh. Oh no. Okay. Set but now let's fire. hear him out. Yep. Set him fire. Oh okay. my god. Uh, yeah. Oh, no, it's that, burning. That, that went, uh, Bryce, that, burning. that went exactly where we thought it was going to go. It turns out. <laughs> yeah. 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 But it went to the moon, or it's on its way. <laughs> That's about how much every taxpayer just paid oh for god. this 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 Artemis launch. <laughs> That was your price. That was your price. <laughs> Swinging. Hot take. Wow. Uh, I'm out of the loop. What happened with Artemis? It launched. It, it, Artemis okay. <laughs> launched. It did. Finally launched. $85 per taxpayer later. Oh, okay. It launched. Wait, is that is ever everybody alive now or everybody that's been alive <laughs> since they started building it? Uh, well, I, I did kind of the population. We've been divided by actual taxpayers. Your price is higher. Um, yeah. So, so, so if you're yeah, we yeah we can push it over. Taxes. We should we, we can push it over a C note. Yeah. A hundred dollars. Well, the out full of your the full program the full program will be a couple hundred dollars. Um, okay. And let me say, worth it. None of us here has a problem with spending money on space, right? No. We're all we're all we're all cool on that. Love we're it. Just when it goes when it ten x's its cost and everything else like that, and finally you watch it launch, like, yeah, you did it. You threw enough money at it. You did it. And yeah. the uh, and, and congratulations to everybody who worked on it because it's a very hardworking group of people trying to make this who have to work within a system that makes it hard. The engineers, the researchers, everybody else who do this, again, I, I am, I am, we, we, we're going to rip on the bureaucracy that makes it complicated to get things done. But their work, phenomenal. It is, it is an amazing piece of 1960s era technology brought into yeah. the 2020s. Um, but that they did that. Uh, the other part, I don't know if you heard this, was apparently it damaged the launch tower. So even the launch tower is expendable. Oh, no. Uh, uh, and so we, we've talked a little bit before about how um, uh, it's a, a, a problematic. I mean that not in a social sense, but in a practical sense. It's problematic to use uh, hydrogen because it uh, turns out hydrogen molecules really small, like to leak out all over the place. Makes the uh, also using parts that were built from space shuttles and uh, never mind I, I, I don't want to uh, 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 the I, I, Artemis uh, 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 what what was that what was that movie go. that they remade um uh, Flight of the Phoenix or something about like uh, it was based on a true story of somebody who crashed oh, the plane they, they, they oh they had to yeah. rebuild the plane out of 
plane parts. Yeah. 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 I mean, that's, I that's a little bit a true what story, but it was a cool story though. Yeah. Or I guess it was, yeah, it was an old story and then it got remade, uh, I think 10, 15 yeah. years ago. Yeah. I, I found myself at a party a few weeks ago, uh, and I was talking to somebody who I found out worked in space stuff. And I, I immediately asked this person, Oh my God, I'm so excited to have talked to you. Can we please discuss the hilarious failure that has been oh, Artemis? No. Uh, uh, found out that they worked on Artemis and uh, uh, they were less than pleased, but we wound up having a good conversation. How, how, how but, does that socially go? Like that moment of like, uh, d does he say, well, relive your trauma, it, Justin, or uh, uh, they were, they were very gracious and they were, okay. they, they, they knew they were, we had, we had had a few pleasantries uh, 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 I, le leading up to it. And so uh, uh, they were, they were gracious enough to point out that uh, this is how things work and, you know, this is the process and, and uh, they had not, they did not feel that they had gotten a fair shake in the press and they, they explained stuff to me, some of which I can totally understand. I totally grokked the fact that, you know, anybody who's involved in any project, you were going to be defensive about certain things, but uh, uh, yeah, here, if you, there are people who did some of the best work of their life and high quality work yes. on this. Yes. And, and that's, that's, and, and, and the thing is, is like, I've encountered that too, right? People like, I'm, I'm like, listen, like this was designed in a, this was designed by Senate staffers. That's where it came from to appease, you know, the suppliers, contractors and stuff because of financial support, whatever. It was pure pork barrel. That doesn't take away how hard the engineers work or the scientists worked on that 100%. But for them to be like, well, there's like, like, I'm sorry. No, it went from two, it went, went from a bad idea to a horrible idea. And it cost $20 billion to get to this point. There is no justification for that because we ended up with the most expensive, unreusable launch system ever. And it just, and really damaged our, our, our ability to go into space, really damaged our ability to be able to like the, what the resources that sucked away from this stuff, it impacted negatively. I, I could because. be on board for the sentiment that in an alternate timeline, we spent the money wiser, but, but you're saying like, when you say damaged, it makes me feel like the moment this successfully took off and went to space, we were set back. Um, no, no. The moment they, they, they left the, the little side room with a bunch of staffers having talked to contractors saying, let's just use this. Let's use this. And they told NASA, you have to build this. And people at NASA were like, there's better ways to do this and cheaper ways to do it. And they said, no, this is what you have to do. That 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 was set a decade ago. That was when it happened, was that the, basically the damage was done was that because of pork barrel politics, NASA's ability to do the best work it could do was just hijacked. Got it. Is what somebody might say. One I might don't say, know if I yeah. subscribe to that. <laughs> yeah, you know, that's, yeah, uh, I, I feel like we've, we've certainly gone around the block on, on, on Artemis uh, in terms of, of our, our problems with it. That being said, it's, it's up. And so, so how long, uh, what, is, what is this trip going to take? Uh, good question. It's going to do its loop-de-loop. -loop, so let's see. Let's do the tr Artemis tracker. Let's see where it's going. Yeah. Um, Whoops. By the way, I went to go see the first. <laughs> oh, sorry. It, it currently says loading. Wait, no, that's the Santa tracker. <laughs> Hold on. <laughs> There's a NASA website. Uh, this is nasa.gov special slash track Artemis, and it's loading a Unreal Engine application. So we will see what's going on here. And um now i'm playing call of duty uh, <laughs> uh so if you go there they actually load up an animation and what not to go do this and uh well and so uh, and uh, uh the news this morning i believe was that uh, you know around the rounded the corner on the moon and um i guess uh is is there a reason to have anything come back or is it where, well yeah we want to go now well, we want to have the Orion capsule come back and land on Earth because we want to make sure that it'll bring our astronauts back. Oh, dear. I just remembered eventually we're <laughs> expecting to put humans on this. <laughs> wow. How wow. do you feel now, Bri? Oh, wow. <laughs> okay. We're All looking, right. This is, this is a really cool animation that shows you that where cool. it is in space. Yeah. Um, and so, so it is... Has it... It has not yet gotten to... The moon, or it has looped the moon. It's, no, I don't think it's pretty it's close. It. Oh, the moon! Oh, I I saw it like a second ago. Yeah, there, there we go. Oh, oh there's the moon. Shoot, he's here. 
Did it loop? Two hundred seventeen thousand miles from Earth, twelve thousand oh. miles from the Moon. Yeah, it would make sense to do this loop. It's going three thousand five hundred miles per hour. All right, so it already did no. Yeah, yeah. Again, the the headlines I saw were that it had rounded the moon. Rounded the moon. Okay. And now it's on its way back. Yeah, with some moon moon fries for with, us. With, with with some sweet moon selfies. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, moon, you're looking good. <laughs> It's been it's a while a, since I've seen you up close, but I got to say that you ain't lost a step. Hey, when other planets be calling you crater face, I don't think that's great. No, baby. Also, did I mean to put you in the category of planets? Because you're not. <laughs> you're a moon. <laughs> now, granted, you're a very big moon, but... Yeah, I like a big moon. Sus- I mean, not suspiciously like a Suspiciously large. Suspiciously but suspiciously large. large compared to the size of the Earth, Thick. some would say. With uh, two C's. Uh, according to the documentary Moonfall. <laughs> I I tried to watch that, Brian. It's, I tried to watch so it. Great. It's so great. You, you I have felt, to have an audience with you. <laughs> I could, but I got partway in and I felt like I was watching a fail video and I started to feel bad. I was like, I got to like where he gets fired by NASA and like this, the, the most cliche fired by Na- like the most, if I had an AI write this thing using cliches, this is what would have happened. That's why and I so I, that got to that scene. Like, I feel bad for watching this because I'm like, like, this feels like I'm, I'm watching, you know, somebody fall on their face and I don't, I feel, I felt uncomfortable. Uh, yeah, but what you missed in that opening scene is uh, the Chiron explains to you that he was able to land the space stu- shuttle with no electronics at all. That's an important yeah. plot point that comes up later. Well, it was fly by wire, so I mean, it's, 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 it's <laughs> you know, uh, yeah, I, I, uh, I'm gonna try, I'm gonna try. Uh, but again, congrats to all the engineers, everybody else who worked really hard on Artemis. Yeah, we, 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 we as much as we, we bemoan. The the circumstances of its birth, the efforts and whatnot put on by the people there, for the most part, uh, I, I would say that if, if the one takeaway from this, the problem is that science is great and even big science can be great, but often the people in the room making the argument for it aren't really the scientists, they're the bureaucrats and they're the people that are looking at, they want a program and not that it's the best path forward, that it's the path that gets, you know, has some sort of incentive other than perhaps what should be. So. I'm like, hey, yeah, I think talk to more scientists, talk to more engineers, just, just, you know, if you're a politician, talk to more of them, get more opinions. Don't just listen to the person, you know, who's in your office because some contractor has paid for this person to, you know, live 200 feet away from you and always tell you, you know, it would be really cool. So. Yeah, but those people tend to be close to the capital. Yeah, nobody uh, wants yeah, yeah. nobody wants to go too far. Here's a counter argument. You know, <laughs> yeah. maybe maybe listen to wherever the money is. I mean, that's certainly yeah. what we do. Follow the money. That's is what right. they say. Yeah, that's why that's why we would like to listen to your ideas. Mm-hmm. But there's just one little technical hiccup that we got, and the problem is a lot of you don't pay us. Money. Yeah, <laughs> pay to play, baby. Payola. That's what we call it. Just kidding. We call it Patreon.com slash Weird things. Yeah, uh, although if you do happen to have any friends in the record business and you want us to spin them wax, then why don't you become a patron and all of a sudden you'll you'll have our ear and you'll have the ear of all of our listeners. And you'll get your uh, custom RSS feed that you can put into the podcatcher of your choice. Never log in, never remember a username and password as soon as you have that put into the podcatcher and get our After Things podcast before anybody else. That is patreon.com slash Weird thing. No, but seriously, Paola, it's pretty great. It smells like a hit. Win win. So, what if I went away to listen to the podcast, but not have to remember my username and all that password stuff? Oh, I mean, well, I mean, if you have your own RSS feed yeah. at patreon.com slash weird things, that would be the way. Yeah, to go. you just get your custom RSS feed, you put it into the podcatcher of your and choice, then you, forget. Then you, set, you set it and forget it. You, you forget your login, you yep. forget your password, mm-hmm. you forget the name of your spouse, you forget what your What if I don't want to have to write this stuff down and keep using it every time? You don't have to. Again, that's the biggest thing. So, uh, remember, 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 remember that movie Memento? Yeah. 
he would be able to just have the new podcast even if he didn't remember where it came from. In fact, we promise that every new patron will get a Polaroid. We call it the Patreon Polaroid phenomenon. That's three So what you're saying is I could be listening to the same podcast over and over and no. not know it because I'm the podcast. guy in Memento. Well, you could theoretically, but that would Wait, be. See, we, we don't. But how would that. I know well, well, if I'm the guy? You wouldn't. You we, wouldn't. Yeah, we don't advise you re-listen because then you would remember that I lied to you just now when yeah. I said we would send you a Polaroid. Yeah. So so just listen. What? Listen and forget it. <laughs> that's the. This okay. is this is our message to Guy <laughs> Pierce. Guy I'm, I'm going to try this. <laughs> you got me. Good. I'm going to subscribe to your OnlyFans. Okay. Done. All right. You know what? We'll take it. Patreon.com. I, yeah. I shudder at what is at OnlyFans.com slash weird things. <laughs> oh, I had, no. Oh, no, no, I, no, 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 I had, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. I ran into, <laughs> years ago, I ran into a couple friends of my brother. My brother said, yeah, like, Dean, it's so and so we're on the internet, and they decided to go to weirdthings.com. <laughs> and they see you, <laughs> and they're like, "Well, of course, you know." It's my older brother's friends. Like, ah, let's go find some weird things. I'm like, "Hi, I'm Andrew. I saw magic." It's <laughs> hilarious. United States up one nothing, one nil oh over Wales for gosh. the record at halftime. At the half, <laughs> just want to keep everybody up to date. What are we doing to Wales? Uh, you know, here's another thing. They got a dragon on their flag. The a whale? The They're called whales. Why don't they have a whale? Put a whale on that Put flag. Put a big whale on there. Get out of here, these jokers. Uh, right. A lot so is making I've... a lot more sense now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to trap you I in my wanna... thicket. I'm going to trap you in my thicket of I, nonsense. I don't know. I don't know. Before yeah. the end of this I, show, I I'm going to get you. I'm going to get you. <laughs> I'm going to get you. Mm, I'm just going to keep uh, dropping these berries pepper. until you Probably follow me into the thicket. So, uh, <laughs> Twitter. Yeah, let's talk about it. What are our thoughts? Uh, it's a micro blogging platform. Uh, mm -hmm. if, if you want to conceptualize it, think of AIM away messages. Uh, uh, yeah, I don't, I mean, uh, 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 uh where where do uh, we start? Yeah, uh, I, I uh, real real quick, here's my hot take on Twitter. My favorite yeah. my favorite new hot trend on Twitter is people going to Twitter to tell us what they posted on other social media yeah. platforms. Yeah. <laughs> like, is, hey guys, uh, here's my Mastodon post on this thing. Uh, it, it's a it's a fascinating social experiment right now. Because obviously the community that has been built on Twitter, frustrating though it might be, is obviously compelling. There's a reason why people are there. Because uh, uh, there are a lot of people. I don't doubt the frustration and anger that some people have with uh, mm. uh, the new CEO, Elon Musk, or uh, you know, just general megrims that, that have existed with that platform for, for you know, ever. But at the same time, <laughs> everybody <laughs> just kind of keeps coming back and you leave for a little bit and then you come back and you're like, hey, everybody, just so you know, I'm having a really good time on this other website. And it's like, okay, cool. It's, it's, it's amazing to watch that shift from one spectrum to the other spectrum. <laughs> that there was this, we, the, the exodus of conservatives to go to these other oh, yeah. platforms. And then now we're watching the other side, kind of the exodus to there. And, and it's, then it's just this. And it's so funny to see the same things play out. And, and, you know, as, as I, as I, you know, am, am rapidly approaching my, my 40th birthday, the biggest thing that I can say about aging is that you realize how much of the world and life are the same patterns repeating over and over and over and over and over and over again. But it's like down to the fact that whenever anybody wants to leave a platform, the social media platform, it always also comes with the idea that, well, because we're leaving the economics of this website are going to totally collapse. And, and you have seen this with conservatives for the last uh, uh, five years that, oh, well, YouTube's collapsing because they're censoring conservatives and Twitter's collapsing because they're censoring conservatives or blah, 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 blah. And now it's the liberals. I mean, if we're going to draw crude drawings of, of, of what's happening now, that, that you see a lot of liberals that are, are upset with the platform and it's leaving and, oh, there, there's all these economic reasons why this platform is going to collapse. I will say that so far this time, the doomsayers 
have been a lot louder, or at least maybe I follow a lot more doomsayers. Uh, I follow a lot more liberals than I do conservatives in general, but uh, 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 it, it has been among the funniest times I've ever been on this website. Like, I, I have to say, I'm going... I'm going to buy the commemorative DVD and the, <laughs> and, and, and the fine China. I'm going to, I'm going to get the action figures for the 10th anniversary of this, the funniest time in Twitter history. I mean, uh, it's certainly more lighthearted to watch everybody have a party at the end of the universe and, on a social media <laughs> platform than believing that the world is ending because of politics. Like that yeah. is, that is a significant uh, upgrade in my experience. Yeah. I, I, I think the comment about is it good to have alternatives? Absolutely good to have alternatives because there's you want to have places and sometimes, you know, there's some people that might want to have conversations within sort of smaller groups that that maybe because they don't want to you know have, you know, hear uh, get, get criticism whatever like that. I I think about people who might be in you know particular you know, you know, feel. You know, outliers in certain areas, whatever. So I get that. I think there's always a value for other alternatives. What I love about Twitter, and and I think that there are different ways that people consume information. I'm the kind of person, like like Justin, probably you, Brian, Bryce. Like I go to I go to every site. I don't just go to like CNN or Fox News. I go there. I go to Axios. I go to just a bunch of different sites across the spectrum because I just want to see what everybody's saying because I I don't trust the people on one part side to tell me what the other side is actually saying. Yes. You know, that, that, that's my universal. Like, I Although don't care. I, I, you know, what I, I do trust everybody telling me what they're posting on Mastodon. I believe that that <laughs> is what they post. Yes. Like, I, I think you're I right trust there. that. Uh, uh, a really great side I've loved was, you know, real clear politics. Mm -hmm. You know, that's, you know, that was one of the things I really loved about the fact that like, you know, you get, it'll tell you, it'll cover, you know, both spectrums of there. And I, and I like that. I like that a lot. And uh, so like Twitter for me, is great because I have no trouble filtering and seeing what I want to see or saying, okay, I just want stupid stuff now. I don't want to have to be thinking about things. Uh, the uh, app uh, Ground News, I, I don't know if anybody is still using it, but I, I still check in there and uh, I, I like their, uh, in general, you know, they, they hit you with the news alert. It tends to be like a thing that everyone's going to talk about. And then the moment you open it, it says, this is what, you know, one team says or another team says and so on. Mm -hmm. do, do you guys Those think the Twitter great. thing is political? Like, I don't think it's a political issue. Uh, it's, part of it. it's part of it. It's I, part I, of it. Is it? Oh, I, no, no, no. I, 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 I do think like that I, sauce I, on top. Yeah, no, no, no. Bryce, Bryce, I would say that there is an identitarian element to this. Uh, uh, and there, it is not, the, the faults of this are not on political lines. But then again, I also think that what's happening at Twitter is largely, you know, look, Elon Musk bought a thing and took it private and he is making decisions. I don't think that when we look back on what happened with Twitter, that it's going to look all that different than what happened with a lot of tech companies that are going to make a lot of very drastic changes to their, 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 their bottom line over the next two years because the free money is over. Uh, everything has to actually make a profit now, and, and that's going to change a lot of what's, what's happening. And so what looks to be abject chaos in my opinion is going to look a lot more like a a, a a a forebearer for a general trend in about two years time all that being said yeah uh, uh there elon musk i think has intentionally antagonized an element of twitter for which is overwhelmingly liberal and and that is part of the uh, identitarian cloister that is the most mad about what is happening right now now that might change and we might already be seeing it change because things move fast on Twitter there. You know, uh, Elon Musk gave a one word answer for well, whether or not Alex Jones was going to be allowed back on the platform. And the answer was no. So if there is an element of the right for which very much wanted Alex Jones to be back on Twitter, they're going to be mad that, that Elon Musk is going to be a, a scold and a censor in the way that the old regime was. Uh, it but, just, it just seems, uh, it just doesn't sound right to say that it's like a political issue. Like maybe it maybe it is a certain audiences that have political demographics, but like I don't think that what's happening is because of is is it I, is well, necessarily I would say on the political that every, line. Everybody I've seen who's left to Mastodon tends to be from one party or one uh, point. The, the, okay, I guess that's so. What much? What you're you're saying? What I'm saying is I'm that saying the, like, the Exodus. 
uh, uh, you know, go ahead to finish. Oh, no, I'm, I'm confused. I'm saying like, yeah. yeah, like I think that right now people there feel like it's not representing their values and they're, they want to go to another platform. I'm saying it tends to be that 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 segment where previously it was like conservatives said we're leaving when they weren't happy. And now I'm seeing that. So I'm saying like, you I, don't no. think it's because they don't like the politics of it? Or you think they do you think it's, it's, it, it's irrelevant? I think that it's not on the topic of politics. Well, uh, I, I mean, Elon, I mean, <laughs> unless we're saying Elon Musk is on the conservative flag or Twitter is now the GOP website. Like, I, I think well, I would, I would, are, I've heard people say that now. I heard well, people and, say, and, well, I don't know who those uh, people say anything. That's the problem with Twitter. many Anybody such cases, say, many such cases. I just, I, I like for me, I, I'm probably not going to, I don't, I don't know if, if Twitter goes away, I will probably not replace it because ultimately I think this is just showing me, I don't need micro blogging in my life. It's not a net positive. Um, but I don't want that attributed as like, oh, it's because it's because the weak liberals wouldn't couldn't stand it on Twitter. Uh, nobody's saying. I mean, that. All right, I, hold on, I, I'll, I'll delete that tweet. <laughs> all right, I'm at, just saying. Like, at, I don't. At, I mean, is. <laughs> if, if if it's it's one thing if like okay, well, I'm seeing people who are liberal who are leaving. Okay, but is, is it because of political issues or is it because the website is kind of a trash fire? Uh, I, well, one, I, uh, one. I don't, I don't know how much of the experience has been affected. I first people. I don't. Mike, it's worked consistently for me. Two. My point was conservatives had the same thing, and they said, "Oh, we're going to leave," and now we're seeing liberals. I'm not. Be, I'm, I'm saying like, yeah, that, people. When people get frustrated, mm -hmm. that was a thing happened with conservatives, and saying now it's happening because conservatives left because they felt like it was being run by very progressives, and now some people, and I can, I'm happy to name names after the show of prominent I, people who are journalists and stuff, and say. They're leaving because they think it's now become, you know, the foothold of they think Elon is an arch conservative. And that's why they're frustrated. They, and they think everything he does, they look at it through that lens. Are they wrong? Are they right? I don't know. But I'm saying that it's not like there's a mass exodus of conservatives right now. I'm, but I'm saying it's like, that's fine. But uh, well, then, OK, here's my anecdote. I'm yeah. if I leave Twitter, it's not for political reasons. Okay. It looks like a trash fire. Put me on the other column okay. then. Like, I, I, it just, I, it just seems not, really no, strange to me to say it's a political topic when you're just looking at political demographics. Well, let me, I'm let saying me, let me, that can I, oh, can the I only people I know, hold on, hold on. The only people in my anecdotal, only people I have seen okay. who publicly I, left mm -hmm. in my, and again, I may be wrong. The only people I've seen, the only high profile columnists and bloggers and people that I've seen who have left this have been people who've been, who, and I could be missing everything, have been from that side. The same is back with the conservatives. It was just the conservatives were leaving. Now I'm just seeing that. I could be wrong. Are they living for political reasons or is it just that group of people? Is it they a political reason that they're leaving? I mean, that's that's what I'm they, trying they, to well, get they don't to. Agree, they, they don't agree with the politics of Elon. They don't agree with their perceived politics of Elon Musk. Uh, uh, well, I... Uh, well, the, I don't again, know. The, I don't know. The, why are they? Bryce, why are they? Okay, wait, wait, wait. You're trying to wait, tell wait, me no, that I'm going to go to Bryce, Why are they leaving then? What has functionally changed about Twitter then? Why are they leaving? What changed about Twitter? Why are they leaving? I, you, I, I don't know. It's your anecdotal data. It's. Uh, I'm, I'm trying saying, to say, but no, why are people leaving? What are they? Is it because it doesn't work? The app doesn't work? Is it because it broke? Is it because they, 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 there's a technical problem? I, 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 you would have to ask the, the people who left. I, I. I, I'm, I'm asking. I'm asking. Is there a is there a political reason to this, or is it just a political demographic? Uh, I would say that again. I think that that there are a lot of identitarian coalitions that are created on the internet, and that they tend to like the same things. There's far more liberals that were engaging in the Hamilton dialogue than there were conservatives. I'm not to say that that it wasn't all liberals. That there were some conservatives that were sharing memes about. Uh, uh, Hamilton, but by and large, it was that. In the same way that a lot of uh, uh, SEC football conversation tends to be more conservative than it is liberal. All that being said, uh, I do think that there are political conversations that are happening on Twitter specifically around content moderation. And that's where I think when the conservatives left, it was because they felt that there were accounts that they enjoyed that they did not feel crossed uh, uh, content moderation guidelines that were being suspended uh, uh, or booted off the platform entirely. Similarly, now, under new management, you are seeing some of those, con some of those uh, uh, accounts come back, most notably the former president of the United States over the weekend. Uh, that is something where some people believe that that is dangerous, that is... 
uh, uh, politically abhorrent, and they are registering their disgust. I don't know if they're going to leave because I don't think the conservatives left when they said that they were going to leave. Uh, but I do believe that those situations, those specific conflicts, are on political lines. And I win. Yeah. I win. <laughs> I, yeah. Three seconds of silence means I win. So <laughs> Maybe the uh, there we go. Of silence ever. <laughs> there we go. Uh, a big, big win for me. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Tell you what, I feel like the USA up one zero on, uh, on Wales. Yeah, I mean, Bryce, if I you want to just express what you want to say, just I'm not going to interrupt you. I, I uh, no, I've I've already said said my my piece. I mean, I, it's I I don't think it has to necessarily be. Uh, a, a political motivation that people are leaving, um, and I don't, I don't know what their reasons are. Um, I agree that many people, many people, it is, it is not okay, so political. Gonna... I totally agree with you on that. <laughs> totally agree with you on that. <laughs> Somewhere, somebody's left for non-political reasons. <laughs> okay. Uh, uh, so. Any other things going any on? Any other in? thoughts? Um, we're not finished with Twitter. We're not. We're staying here, right Is, will here. Will we ever? One more will, than. Will, go ahead. What? Let let let's say let's say that the decisions being made are disastrous. You know that we have on one hand, Elon says we're bringing back Donald Trump, but he says no to Alex Jones. And to many people, there's not a lot of difference in those points of view. Both of them look at people who may have incited violence. Both of them people look at like the spread of disinfo, et cetera. And so that's already creating this like, wait, what's the standard here? And if you're going to have this sort of mercurial standard that depends upon the whims of the CEO, what's the longevity of a system like that? Uh, I, you know, the question, I think, that the, the answer to that question goes to the heart of why Twitter is compelling now, you know? Because, uh, uh, again, I don't doubt the anger or the disgust of people that are angry and disgusted by Twitter right now. I, I, I believe that that is real. What I have said from the very beginning is that Twitter's heroin. Just because you don't like your new dealer doesn't mean you stop doing heroin. Uh, uh, you, are, you are there for the community. And I think that that is something that has become abundantly clear of frustrated though many, many, many might be, there's nothing like this on the internet. At least not now. Now, maybe that'll be replaced, but I suspect that it won't be the exact same. It'll be something else and something that mostly takes advantage of the, the platform as it is. Uh, you know, Twitter began, and I think what, what got a lot of us into Twitter was because we were all internet early adapt, uh, adopters. And so all of a sudden, there was a community that was almost entirely catered to us and being able to share exactly what we were doing in real time, share news in real time. Uh, that became in in intensely compelling. And then we hit this tipping point where, you know, it, it, it also became about, you know, a, a, a journalism and it became about politics and it became about all these other things for which uh, uh, has created this rich community uh, and comedy and stuff like that. So uh, what, what exists here now is an extraordinary uh, a meeting of the minds. And I hate the, the, the term public square because it, it has this idea that it's it's rooted or, or deeply important and i don't know if it's necessarily you know uh, uh, uh deserves to to have this kind of title of the the marketplace of ideas but i do think it's a rad very very compelling community and and that has proven itself to be something that is incredibly sticky yeah, uh, I, I've always dug the fact that Twitter sort of represented this moment that mm, the online part of humanity essentially started keeping a diary in, uh, in public. But, uh, man, is it hard to have any kind of reasonable conversation and um, uh, 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 just, just to put a button on the politics side of things. Those who were upset and quitting, the chatter I saw was largely, I don't want to be on a platform that empowers um, uh, hate speech. And of course that's a loaded term because who's to say what, uh, uh, you know what, I'm going to, I'm going to stop talking. Um, but, um, uh, th there was like an association bias where it's like, I don't want to be on this thing. If this, this political figure that I don't like is on it. I, 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 
And also, totally support. It's a free website. Who cares? It's a it's a freaking website. Who cares? It's like why? Well, I, like I, it's just I, it's ones and zeros. Like I guess I, community and all that stuff. But like there are other websites. <laughs> there are other places to meet people. There's, I I I, I will things. make this argument. Yeah. But what I like, I I think if you're not happy, and I think everybody has to act on their principles. This, and I'm fine to support it. Like like the, when you know what other group left, whatever reasons. I think that's fine. Voting with your feet. I I think even if I don't agree with somebody, I'm like, hey, you're doing something, and I I respect that. Uh, Bryce, the point of like just the website. Like, I, I my argument is, if Facebook shut down tomorrow, we would grumble, be problems for like a week, and then we'd be back to normal. If Twitter shut down, we would not know what the hell is going on in the world. It would we would be very it would be you know, chaos because well, the uh, amount of worse, information worse yet reporters wouldn't know what well, to report. That's well, that's where we get it. But yeah. that's the point. That's my point. Where are we getting information from about what's going on in the world from reporters? It, it is. So when you shut, when they're not reporting out of different parts mm -hmm. of the world and whatnot and saying what's going on, that news doesn't just pop out of the ether. It comes sure. from there. And that's, that's, that's what I'm saying. Like, that would be a big impact. I, I would, but it's not I, the be all end all. It's not too big would, to fail. I, I would make the argument that we oh. might be in a better news environment if if if, if, if reporters did oh, yeah. not use Twitter as a as a catch all to to uh, you know uh, put their finger in the air and here's what Twitter's well. saying about yeah. this. Well, and something, yeah, a, a Bryce, you're right. I mean, it's not eventually. It's something statistically speaking. Eventually, something will displace it, and if it vanishes tomorrow, something will eventually fill the void. But what a void it will be for a while. I, I I do think I I I would push back slightly on on your on your statement, Bryce. That mm. yes, it is just a website, but like it's a community that matters. Communities do matter on the internet. Like like it is the crowd that is gathered there that is important to you. And Facebook is important because you are they are very good at trying to tailor exactly the community that you see to people that you care about. Uh, Twitter is the opposite. It is something where, like, yes, you're following people, but also retweets mean that you're seeing a lot more of 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 what is on there. But also, you're able to to curate your experience to a certain extent. Who knows where that platform goes from here? But there's no denying, at least for me, boy, uh, uh, as much as I can I can uh, complain about Twitter because everything is is worthy of complaints. Anything that's worthwhile is worthy of complaining about at some point. Uh, is there no better site for like one note jokes and sports updates and politics for straight from the horses mouths of the people that are, that are doing it? Like it's, it's a, it's a pretty unique potpourri that, that uh, I, I think I would, if, if I were to, to try to replace it, I would be going to a lot of different places. And so, yes, we have McDonald's at home. There's another <laughs> website that could do a thing, uh, but sometimes you just really like McDonald's. What if we got Google Reader back in uh, back in action? I'll tell you what. What if we RSS'd all, it up? All for it. All <laughs> for <laughs> it. No, because that's one thing that Twitter did replace for me that I do think was for the worse was mm -hmm. that I just gave up on on RSS feeds because and part of it is because blogs got crappier and it was a lot more garbage that was that was <laughs> being people pumped started out. repurposing tweets as blogs. Basically, I mean, like, here's like, what the tweets are saying about the real simple syndication. But I but I very much I made a conscious decision when Google Reader went away that I didn't or I, I tried Feedly or whatever. For a little bit and then i was like ah, whatever i just i'm gonna follow all the things that i currently have rss feeds for and it's just gonna be in my feed when i'm look when i'm in the mood to look for stuff hmm. uh but i would rss love, I would or love die man yeah i would love it rss yeah. i still uh, use rss i just looked up uh the the rss reader i used after google reader died is still up that's awesome uh news blur that's that's an awesome one yeah maybe, I uh, use, maybe RSS uh, sorry sorry new, news blur not not great bl branding. <laughs> like, you don't if think? there's one thing I want out of my news, it's not blurriness. You don't want to blur it Got up? This blur it up. News blur on my fingers <laughs> from this. <laughs> uh, I still use Feedly, and I use Feedly Classic because they did this update, which I didn't like. Oh. There's a lot of people. Like, well, sometimes, like, a good product will see where trend is going and then try to do what that other trend was doing, like al algorithmic stuff and whatnot, when it's like, no, I liked you because you weren't that. Yeah, I'm not saying that was there, but it was like you know, and like like Twitter, like Twitter went through this we need to be Facebook phase for a while. Oh my god, which really, yeah. Uh, I'll, uh, I'll I'll tell you what I'll probably move to heavily would be Reddit because like Twitter, everything on Reddit is posted as public, um, and uh, unlike Twitter, you can reliably see news headline, local Austin something or other, 
and I immediately will not even read the article. I'll click straight to the comments where the number one most upvoted thing will be, hello, person who was at the accident scene. Here's yeah. what happened. Uh, <laughs> it, 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 there, there, there's some kind of self-moderation and you know proactive moderation on, on the part of humans there. I'm a fan of compelling internet products. I like those. I like that internet product. I like Twitter. I like email. <laughs> I like them all, man. I love I, it. I, I put out a tweet. Is like, and, and everything, too, is like obvious from this conversation. Everybody's media consumption is different. And so what a thing means is, is, is can be varied. I, I love you. Like, you. like my two things, Twitter and YouTube. Twitter, because that's how I go, like, what the hell are, what's going on in the world? And then YouTube for me is how I learn stuff. And I, I'll, I'll, I'll put it in one of my picks, but like, um, I love the number of crazy obsessive people writing, making content for a few hundred people to watch, or sometimes eight, you're like, the, you're like the ninth, you know, the eighth person to watch a video. And you're like, this is really cool. And you're like, I should tell the world. I'm like, I don't, I think there are probably eight people on the planet that really care about this particular topic. So maybe it has reached its full audience. Hmm. I, 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 I kind of, I like, I like discords. We've, we've got, we've got some discord servers. Mm. I, I really like discord a lot and I, I like it because it's not public. Um, yeah. And, and maybe it's because I have, have Twitter or, or a good group of folks on discords who post, who post news stories and, and about things that go on. But I, I like it because it's not open and public. It's just the folks that I like and they're in, well organized servers. Hundred um, percent. Cool Discord story. is the most undertold story about n new media, about what's been going on, because you just don't see it talked about or covered. Because it's a generational thing of people who are in there talking about this sort of stuff. The number of products that have come out because technology stuff and whatnot. Besides, forget even just the crypto stuff. It is such a huge phenomenon. But like you would, if you talk to tech reporters and stuff, they're like. Eh, this and it's like it's huge it's huge like the number of my friends that are have they have their own discord servers for different topics and other stuff that's going on there i think that's going to be the future for a lot of stuff i think that's could be a huge future there so i'm i'm very much a fan of discord what it is and and discord is just irc with facebook groups like it isn't really anything more than that it's it's not like some new like tiktok is interesting but it's a completely new paradigm well kind of it's like channel surfing, I guess. But um, Discord is very much just like it's. It is literally chat rooms and forums. Uh, yeah, but but they were, but 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 they were smart about it, right? Like yeah. like they they de they defined their product. They based it on an existing community, right? It was it was gamer focused. They understood that they were, uh, uh in many ways redundant feature wise of Slack. But they were like, well, but you don't want to have fun on the same app that you work on. So there's a worthwhile thing for another app. And that's why, you know, again, it's like the most important social media products define community first, or at least or find community based on their technology. I think we, a lot of times we focus far too much on the features and the tech and whether or not it's innovative instead of looking at well, how did this speak to the largest number of people? Why does this gigantic number of people continue to interact with it? What are they getting out of it community-wise? And and Discord is great. I I, I, lo I love it. I, I think it's I think it's fantastic. I, I don't think it's a Twitter competitor though. Hmm. Well, it's a, but it serves a different thing though. But it, yeah. it, it it certainly it could do a lot of what maybe people use Twitter for for some extent. Um, yeah. Uh, Bryce, although, do you want to disc? Yeah. Go okay. Ahead. Does somebody want to give to our audience who maybe have not aren't familiar with Discord? Somebody want to give them the quick TLDR? I think I think Bryce it's, nailed it. Yeah, yeah, it, 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 it's, it's IRC. It's, IRC. <laughs> it's like it's like the vision well, of IRC, right? Like not I, just, yeah, but I'd say like, that's the abstract thing. You go and you create your own Discord server. Is what I was going to get. Yeah, at, is you oh, create your yeah. own Discord server and you can invite people in there to do it, and you can have it hosted, you know, in the cloud, etc. But basically, the idea is similar to like very similar to like Slack, but the idea is you can just go say, "I want to create a Discord server for people who want to talk about science fiction books." You invite people in, and you can make it public where anybody can join, or you can do invite only. Yep. You have moderation. You can create bots. You can do some really cool stuff with there, like have ask questions and stuff. So. It's like, you know, it's a forum, but yeah, but it's, it's yeah. the idea is that you just, you just go sign up and create one and get it going. Quickly. You can go to bit.ly slash jury discord. Oh, that is bit.ly slash J-U-R-Y discord. 
Oh. It's I, my I Discord wonder. where I reign supreme. <laughs> and as we, I think that's the wave of the future. I think as we part, as we start getting better with AI moderation and a, putting bots that can sort of help run these sorts of things, I think the idea is it's maybe in the future it's not like, oh, I, I'm creating a podcast or whatever. It's like I'm launching not necessarily Discord, but some form of that. Oh, subscribe to this. Well, that's where you'll get my audio and my videos and everything else. You can easiest way to find it there. And that's where the community is. So everything's in sort of one place. Yeah. Uh, it's, a, it's a pretty, it's a pretty cool, pretty cool website. Uh, uh, yeah, I dig it. And they've got like, like I, what's it, what I think is really cool is like the API and the bot stuff. Um, I think that shows a lot of, uh, especially enthusiasm from developers to, mm -hmm. to, to, to build new features into the, into this, into the app. Uh, that is not just officially from the company that makes it. I think that's like that's kind of the mid journey stuff is on. Is I know a, a buddy of uh, a, a buddy was showing me some stuff, and it's all in Discord the way he does it. So mm -hmm. you know, and and that's as we move forward, and we've seen a lot of. I mean, really, the birth of social media. Um, uh, you know, from from our perspective, but the one thing that will always, it mattered then, and it's only, I think, going to matter more and more is the passion that your user base has for your product. And, and that is irreplaceable. That is something that, that is uh, uh, very important. And in a world of a billion different things that you can do at any given time, it is only going to get more and more valuable if your user base just has a very compelling reason to be there on Discord. It tends to be a lot of passion because that's where your friends are, right? Like you want to, you want to be bound to them. Uh, uh, with, with with Twitter, it's something maybe a little bit more complicated, uh, uh, and and at times for people who are are frustrated by what algorithm feeds them, sometimes you can look at it in 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 a, in a sinister way. But there is something that that you are passionate about and and you want to come back to. Well, yeah, want to do picks? Yeah. Uh, I got a pick. Here's a question. Pick it up. Uh, pick it up, pick it up, pick it up. let's say you wanted to teach something uh, that that requires people to create a mental map so we tend to use visuals to do that uh, what happens when you're teaching that thing to somebody who's blind since birth uh, that's a question that uh, our friend uh, deviant olive of uh, red team alliance tackled when he recently taught lock picking at the texas school to the blind or, or texas school for the blind and he um uh, th this was born of a conversation he had over a uh, Zoom link where um, he sent a series of oversized 3D printed items and uh, uh, basically wanted to see if he could do it in a group setting. So he came to Austin and we, uh, 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 Brant uh, shot a video for Deviant and Deviant was kind enough to let us run it on the Monorogue channel. So if you um, uh, check it out, it's really fascinating because it begins with... Uh, Sort of, you know, if, if if you have no idea what's inside a lock, you get to experience it uh, from the inside out. I almost wonder how well this would play just listening to the audio of it. But by the end of it, he's got uh, all these students opening four pin lo locks and also along the way having challenging conversations about is is this what criminals do? And it's like, well, uh, it's like a kitchen knife. You know, a chef can use it to create a delicious meal or a bad criminal can use it to get, steal a lady's purse. Were Nixon's crew criminals? <laughs> <laughs> mm. uh, uh, but it's, uh, it's, it's really, I don't know, it's so joyful. I, I really enjoyed it. I, awesome. I think I've watched this 45-minute video twice, yeah. and uh, it's just a delight. That's what, my, my father when he was in high school, they used to wrestle against the kids from the school for the blind. And when you wrestle with them, they have, the one thing is you have to have like a hand on them. Like you have to have a hand on each other to keep contact. So they mm -hmm. know where you are. Mm -hmm. He said they were like the best team there was. He said, they just, <laughs> just like, it was just, they were phenomenally, all of them amazing, you know? And it's just, well, and, and there is something like it's it's inherently kinesthetic. If what you're doing is drawing a mental map of what's happening inside mm -hmm. of the lock, uh, having eyes, d not a lot of help <laughs> like outside of <laughs> yep. outside of locating where to put the pick and the tension wrench. Everything else is the map entirely based on what you're feeling in, in your fingers. Yeah, uh, it's, yeah. it's it's wonderful. It's awesome. De Deviant to hear Deviant just talk about this idea that he's got that he had and. To, to scale it up to make this presentation with the students he he his enthusiasm 
and his excitement for it just comes completely comes through and it's it's hard not to feel the same the same as, excitement. as, as does the enthusiasm from the students yeah. you know and and you could tell I, there's a, a fairly broad range from uh blind from birth to uh you know extremely nearsighted to uh neurodivergent to uh there there's one uh, uh one student who was uh using asl it, it, it's just i don't know uh, uh uh, wholesome and lock picking words you don't often hear put together. <laughs> I, I just, yeah, I just it. imagine the conversation when they got home. So what'd you do today? Learn how to pick locks. Yeah. <laughs> oh, okay. It was great. Uh, uh, uh was and by great. the way, uh, uh, you'll see it when you watch the video, but he created a series of like eight different bags, each one tagged uh, with, with a little bit of Braille on there. One, two, three, four, five, six. And so, you know, you feel each of them as you go through it. Um, and Brant did a stellar job on the visuals with the 3D modeling on there. Yeah. It's, it's great. Yeah. By the way, shout out to Braille. Yeah, big ups to Braille. Yeah, big up it's Braille. been too long. I was like, ah, you know, I can't see, I can't read. Ah, what if we put bumps on a page? Ah, that'll never work. Mm. It works. You know, and <laughs> haters, like, haters will say it's Photoshop. I mean, <laughs> you ever see a Braille Playboy? No. Is it just they a, made? Oh, I have heard they, of that. Yes. <laughs> oh, well, it's it's the okay. articles. But I was going to say, articles, yeah, it's just for the articles. Yeah. <laughs> but sir, it's not a joke, though. They literally made. Yeah. Yeah. That's uh, great. Oh, oh that, okay. That's yeah. just boobies. Okay. Uh, we got to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> hey, I got to pick. Pick it up. Money. I love it. But I <laughs> problem is I got to spend it so I can buy people gifts for the holiday season. I just want to get them a bunch of really cool huh. things, uh, uh, you know, like Bryce uh, pulled uh, like up the Wikipedia for money and stuff. So that's why I'm going to keep my eyes on scamstuff.com. Oh, now yeah. now yeah. what do they have now what sort of stuff do they have over there? Uh uh well bring it up so I can see. <laughs> Well, you got to I, I I don't get to double tap here. <laughs> but, but yeah, dude, it's uh it's it's coming up on Black Friday and uh tis yeah. the time to give good gifts. Here, uh, I got a I got a pick for it. Uh, I got a real got? pick. How about this? Okay. Okay. Uh speaking of Brant, Brant Hughes, uh Brant also made an amazing video 2 days ago. <laughs> <laughs> um describing uh these uh these these paintings that we've had on the Modern Rogue set for the past few months and uh, uh, I'll, I'll tell you that they contain a secret message uh, and you can get them yourself and learn about how to solve them also on the Modern Rogue uh, YouTube channel. Um, and if you like them, you can get them at scamstuff.com. But uh, Brant made a, this incredible uh, illustrative video describing uh, how how this sort of thing works. I'll show this just a little bit, but there's like a there's a double binary mode on one of them and the other one's got more secret stuff. So if you like puzzles and uh, home decor... Check it out on Modern Rogue and Skate. Double Spot. binary. Yeah. yeah, but... None of these kids going to knock it off. <laughs> what if... I was looking more for, like, I don't know. Like, I hate... I want a lighter, but I don't want to have to carry it around in my pocket. Yeah, exactly. Mm. Why'd you step on my unsolicited plug for Brian's website? <laughs> I'm just trying to... I'm just trying to say, like, Brian, if people were going to sign up for a mailing list or maybe, like, a text uh, well, uh, I mean, list, yeah, where, yeah, where yeah. would people go? Because there's going to be a lot of deals this week, yeah, right? Yeah, well, I mean, if you went to gimme.scamstuff.com, you could yeah. enter to win one of five of the uh, artwork pieces that Bryce was just talking about. Oh. And along the way, you'll get email updates from yours truly. Ooh, well, That's... I'm going to go now. Yeah, but I... I want a lighter, but I don't want to carry it. I want it like on my wrist. Where would yeah. I, I need a site that can give me that? <laughs> well, if That's you would like, stuff. Would, you, would you like it to also tell you the time? Because it doesn't do that. Oh, it well, yeah. That. If you're in the process of granting magical wishes, <laughs> sure. Well, it sounds to me like you want the arson watch available at scamstuff.com. <laughs> it's a James Bond style watch that also shoots flame. Yeah. But if I'm going to be James Bond, I got to know how to get out of stuff like handcuffs. <laughs> Yeah. Well, I mean, the problem is it's tricky. You can improvise something or you can have, I don't know, a handcuff key built into your shoelace or mm. in a ring uh, that you can use to extract yourself. OK, but maybe if I wanted to learn more about it, though, how about that? Not after. Uh, well, now that. you're screwed. <laughs> <laughs> oh, OK. You don't uh, have some sort of yeah, escape yeah. from handcuffs sort of. Oh, wait. Yeah. No, we do handcuff. have a kit. Uh, oh, yeah, boy. Yeah, it turns yeah. out I should open up the website. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> hey, Brian. 
You know, I've been batting a thousand so far today with my creative ideas. Oh yeah. <laughs> oh, no, no, no. So I just want to give you this one. Yeah. I don't know if you can rush this on the website, but just like a slogan for the arson watch. Okay. A watch so cool, you're gonna start smoking cigarettes. <laughs> Actually, hold dot, on. Dot dot dot. Kids. I, I, <laughs> oh no. <laughs> not even not even cigars. We can't we can't nope. meet in the middle with no. Okay. Well, right. this a cigar. There's only like a little bit of lighting. So cigarette. Okay. Yours are chain smoking cigarettes. Okay. You're just gonna rip through these things. What about what about? Uh, how crust. about this? Just arson watch. <laughs> Tell time. Smoke pot. <laughs> uh, by the way, it's uh, four twenty somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> You've got the king of all mirrors. You've got the king of all mirrors. Yeah. Like if anybody's interested in doing magic and wants something that will blow the F people away and can be used for different stuff, that prop is phenomenal. Uh, yeah, and it, it is the kind of thing that that crosses the bridge. It's actually one of the few magic tricks that I think is better for the magic enthusiast than it is for the touring performer. Because if you're on stage, you have to explain why you have a mirror on stage. Whereas if you're in your office, it could just be there all the time and it makes sense. And then, you know, they do a card trick and then all of a sudden a freaking card appears through it. It's really, really magical. There you go. Cool. Scamstuff.com. Yeah. Buy, buy things. Consume, please. Consume. Please consume. This is when. This is your this God. Is, <laughs> this is the money. This is money season, baby. Right. <laughs> we need it. And we need, we need a precipitous rainfall. I've, I've got it. I've got a shelf in my office here with stuff I bought from Scam Stuff. Yeah. I don't go to Brian. Yeah. Like, Yo, Brian, do you got an extra thing? I have a puzzle box, all this stuff. I'm like, I'm, I'm, I'm a fan of everything. Everything they make is really well thought out, well presented, and incredible. Great, for, great gifts too. Some of the stuff, if you just yep. want to give somebody some kind of really cool, really, really, really cool stuff, it's Good high gifts. quality. Yeah, Ooh, at uh, the lowest prices they'll ever be offered. <laughs> oh, okay, okay. Yep. That, <laughs> yep. Is that on picks? I think okay. we got uh, S- Siri. Did you get that? Just <laughs> send that email out. <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Watch so cool, you're gonna be smoking crack. <laughs> <laughs> Another one out well, of the park from me. <laughs> on that note <laughs> how's it been i think i'm gonna just double down on that scam scuff <laughs> mm-hmm. oh. gentlemen uh it's been weird usa usa what's what's the score what's the score one one nil 74th minute oh only only 15 more minutes Plus hey, what, whatever what, other. Let's say we just illegally stream the World Cup. Oh, uh, yeah, let's just do that. And it, or maybe <laughs> maybe what I'll do is we'll stream it, and I'll just put an Oculus Quest on, so I could be like the guy who's pretending to stream a game. Uh, uh, <laughs> yeah, I feel like this is like the Lando Calrissian World Cup. Why is Why that? Because with all the things that now that it's actually happening, they're like, oh, yeah, you can't wear that armband that has a rainbow flag on it. And also, we're not serving beer. Oh, and also, yeah. They just oh. asked one of the teams. They have the Belgium. Word, Belgium. Yeah. They have the word love embroidered on the sticker, on the on the tag inside their jersey that FIFA has asked them to remove that love tag. Because it looks too much like a like. A rainbow is too close to the word love. Oh, my. And I love the fact that FIFA's standing. Oh, wow. <laughs> oh. This deal keeps getting I mean, worse all the time. When, when oh, we yeah, thought, sorry, when we thought that the, yeah. the, the, the deaths of all of the migrant labor trying to build the stadium, you know, would be a warning sign. <laughs> I know. <laughs> what, who could have seen this coming? Who possibly could have seen this coming when there was already international coverage of uh, uh, hundreds, if not thousands, of migrant slave labor building these stadiums? Oh, all right. Well, we'll uh, we'll take a minute and uh, and uh, get ready for some after things. If anybody needs a short break, yeah, here I'll be right back. Take a short break. Be right back. Justin, yeah, man. Uh, over the weekend on Sunday, yeah, what happened was uh, the finale. The Formula One finale. Oh the, no! The already, final race, yeah. What was it? Was there a big cliffhanger? Uh, not really. The first uh, uh, Max Verstappen won the championship like a month ago. Yeah, <laughs> he's got like four hundred. You say points. it's Verstappen or Verstappen? It's Verstappen, but I like to I like to say Verstappen just to kind of like you know put a little, a little 
I was gonna say English on it, I guess. <laughs> Put a little belt like, or a little Dutch on it. Dutch on it. Dutch Just my Dutch oven. it up. Dutch it up. A little Dutch door action. There was a there was some good uh, drama at the end over who would get second place in the championship. Mm. Red Bull had never, I guess, when they've won championships in the past, they've never gotten it as a one-two. Where oh, so this would be a big deal. And uh, uh, it came it came to the last uh, last few laps, but uh, couldn't uh, Checo couldn't couldn't bring it home. There was there were two very funny moments of physical comedy, both of them with the Ferrari driver Charles Leclerc. Um, the first one was at the end of the race when they were done. Everyone does you know their victory messages over the radio when they're done, and it's the end of the season, so everyone's like, you know, ah, thank good work everybody. I mean, you know, they're all doing the whole thing. Let me see if I can get actually. <laughs> Let me pull the clip of 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 Charles doing his um, King Charles, King Charles, and God save him. God, well. I mean now, and now we, and now, now we have to. Uh, reading the song. Uh, um, up, 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 up. So, so there, so a bunch of the drivers are still on track, and they're doing like donuts and stuff. It's the end of the season. Who cares? Oh, yeah. here we go. Uh, here I will play you the audio, and then I will tell you what he says here. <laughs> oh. Sounds like a cough. Grazie, grazie. <laughs> He goes, grazie, grazie. Oh, I pressed the drink button. <laughs> he, he gave himself a little bit of a water. Oh, morning. no. And then he coughed. And then he coughed. The other thing was also with Charles. Uh, so they have the cool down room this year where after the race, the top, the podium folks, while they're waiting for the podium to get ready, they put him in a little room and they have him watch video highlights and they listen in as they chat. And so uh, the races number one and number three were there. They've got like high, high little high stools there. Yeah. And Max is sitting there and Sergio is next to him and they're they're watching the race. And they're like commentating. They're like, like oh, this was when I did that and that blah, 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 blah. Just, just BS it. Yeah. It's chopping it up. It is. It's, it's even more low key than that. Yeah. Um, a lot of times they've cut to it and they're not even talking. Cars. Cars. Um, or they say whatever the language is. And so the two of them are sitting and they're like, well, where are you thinking? Like, well, where's... The, where's Charles? Where's the other guy? And so they pan back, and Charles is in like a different chair, a rec like reclining back, yeah. <laughs> drinking like a box of coconut juice or coconut milk or something. And it's just the, it's just the funniest thing that he's like out of the frame, not even near them. Um, anyway, Formula One. Catch. Formula One. When does it come back? Uh, in uh, w what do they say? Like uh, like four months. Oh man, four months or so. But does the TV show come out in that intervening time? It, yeah, it, it'll be early next year, I think, when it'll come out. Ooh, it, yeah, good it, time. They always try to do it like a little before the season. Oh, to get everybody hyped. Yeah, yeah. So, it'll be a good one. There's a lot of a lot of good questions. A lot of questions a lot lingering. Of questions. A lot of questions. Questions. What's your favorite question, Brian? Uh, he hello. <laughs> it's the question people say when they answer a phone. Hello? 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 Oh. Andrew, your favorite question? Oh, no. You, you've, you're muted, Andrew, unfortunately. That's why I'll never say that again. <laughs> oh, really. No, no. Almost. Touching thing and ah, uh, just bringing it up, just too much, oh, too much, too much. Well, you know, next, next, next round, old Haley. I I like Comment. to ask people, like, where do you want to be in five years? Mm, it's a good one. It's a really good one to see, like, what people's goals are. Yep. Mm. I want to be on the moon. So I'm, I'm really betting on this Artemis thing. I was gonna say you're, uh, <laughs> you got some, you got a Whitey chance on the moon. <laughs> Yeah, uh, you look up that song. Oh, it is. Yeah, no, 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 we are all familiar. We are all familiar. We all know. I'm not telling you. Oh, oh, everybody listening knows. Everybody. Oh, you guys know. I know you guys. Jeez. Oh no, we know. Gil, and everybody Gil, here, we did a survey. Gil Scott, everybody here knows Gil the Scott context Heron's of that joke. Classic everybody. Whitey's on the moon. <laughs> it's it's a banger. Look it up. Look it's it a up. Banger. Go look it up, everybody. Yeah. 
don't know you guys know because you know but why i remember showing it to justin when he was in high school exactly like, i've never i know how that's huh? never been more excited <laughs> <laughs> no need for contact tracing on that one <laughs> all right we want to do some after things that's that was oh. my that was my 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 entrance into radical black thought. <laughs> reading Whitey's Whitey on the up. Moon and being like this is this this slaps. <laughs> I mean, let me read more Gil Scott Aaron. Actually, oh. that went from first Mark Rock told me about that one. Oh, Mark oh, Rock. Mark. Yeah. Mm. Rock. And the big rock. Uh alrighty, you want to do some after things? Yeah. Ready. Oh, Wales has equalized it. Ugh. In the uh in the seventy what eighth minute? No, it's already into the eighty third minute. Gareth Bale. Wow. Ugh. Oh, yeah. Gareth Bale. All right. Uh let's do some after things. I'll catch you in Andrew. In three, two. Hello and welcome to After Things. I'm joined by Mr. Bryce Castillo. Hello. And Justin Robert Young. Hey! <laughs> and Brian Brushwood. <laughs> Kiki a kick. That's Spanish for cock a doodle doo. Oh. Yep. Oh. <laughs> when my brother, when my brother, uh, where it first like went to visit his in-laws in the Dominican Republic. The thing, the thing I remember about his trip there was they had like a house in sort of the rural part. Was it like every day at like five thirty a.m. there'd be some rooster on top of the, you know, house just going rock rah, 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 and just can never sleep after that. I don't know if it was in Spanish, but I'll tell you what. Uh, get get yourself a neighbor that has a rooster, and you'll never feel guilty blasting Beastie Boys at eleven p.m. It's great. <laughs> Like, that like, that just... that chicken goes off constantly. I know. The it's great. No Vivaldi spring over here. It's yeah, yeah. nine o'clock, nine thirty, ten, ten thirty, ten thirty, all day, uh, all day long. Look, uh, we 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 pay that uh, we pay in installments so that we could cash in for very loud once a week late night music. I I have a theory. I am not a biologist zoologist or an expert in really any domain if we have to be honest here but yet that won't stop me hmm? that might be how foxes find where all the chickens are because the roosters <laughs> won't shut yeah. up yeah. you think there's there some the take? fox you, you think they're getting paid months? under no. the I think they're, they're giving the away the ghost <laughs> hey. i don't know i think maybe they're dumb like five miles away some foxes sleep and i'm like man i'm so hungry can't smell it oh i'm so hungry then <laughs> we're like Oh, all right. Now I know where you are, and <laughs> yeah. boom. I think they're just dumb. Although I, think I, just dumb. I, I, I do believe that the cockadoodle doing is also serving as an alarm. Like that's part of the reason. Um, there, there was uh, again per our previous conversation a thread in Reddit about like why do people so many people have roosters in Austin? And it's like, well, if you have a bunch of chickens without a bunch of hens without a rooster, they tend to get gobbled up, and the rooster is a pretty good. Alarm system for the rest of the 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 gobble gobbledy pack. That's mm. what, that's what you call a group of hens. Yep, a gobbledy pack. Got, I get dim, that dim theory, goblins. but the rooster that just goes off all the time is just telling every every predator in the neighborhood where the chickens are. Yeah, and and God help you if those chickens are in the basket with the eggs. I know. Before you get across the, it better not be the one basket. Across the river. I always have a hard time because I look at a bunch of eggs and I'm like, how many are there? And, I, and then I start to want, and I'm like, don't you do it. And then I, I back away. <laughs> you don't count them. Yeah, you don't. need to let them hatch, Brian. No, you, you you look at a, a, a bunch of bunch of eggs and you better just say, look at them. <laughs> well, that, that don't, count like, them. don't count them. Don't count. Do not count them. I mean, do it just looks count them. It doesn't look like anything at all. To hey, me. Mr. Numbers, knock it off. <laughs> uh, old, old, old Steve Sequential over here wants to count these eggs. Wait, is that a thing you get to do? Is take the bit I was doing and then grab it for yourself and then make me the villain in it? All right. Uh, let's no, I was playing off you. I was yes ending you. Okay, played right, along. Right, you right, were let's... saying. You were saying that. <laughs> I'm like, no, my bit was I wasn't getting away. Okay. okay. I, I never right, let's clarify. <laughs> it is fine to count the eggs. You are allowed to count the eggs. What you cannot count is eggs as chickens. Oh, yeah. Don't count your chickens before it's, they hatch. Before they hatch. That's yeah. what it is. Don't count your chickens. Because you your eggs are fine. Who wouldn't want to? I got 12 eggs. Do you have 12? No, I don't know that I. This is like a counting 101. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That's a good point. I've got, got all these cryptocurrencies. 
okay, <laughs> what are they worth? <laughs> oh, they're, they're not Bentleys yet. Don't no. count your yeah. Bentleys while they're cryptos. <laughs> they're still bent, <laughs> but not Bentleys. Uh, I saw. I got into a chat on Twitter the other day with someone about the phrase "have your cake and eat, eat it too," because that phrase confuses folks sometimes. It confused me until about last year, because uh, it's like, well, of course you get you get your cake and then you eat it. I don't understand the problem. Still, here. still confused. Well, still confused. It's supposedly the original version of that phrase was "you can't eat your cake and have it too," which makes more sense sequentially. And is the yes. idea of it, but for whatever reason, so you want to possess your cake forever. Well, I mean, or you can eat it. You have a choice. Oh, if you that eat to, it, you to, don't to have, have it. it. Yeah, you have it. Yeah. yeah, right. You're like, I ate a cake, and you're like, well, where is it? Well, I ate it. Well, I so ate you it. don't have it anymore. You're like, no, there's no, no more cake. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but um, I got the phrase turned around at some point, like 50 years ago, and so now it is. It doesn't make sense sequentially, but the the message is still the same. You can't eat a cake and still have it. Yeah, that makes yeah. so much more sense now. Uh, what uh, the skin a cat thing was that? Was that real? Is that a, a popular pastime? Skinning uh, cats. Um, do we want to know? I, I suspect it is. I I fear it is. I know that that cat in the bag, uh, uh, the cats out of the bag, was a reference to the same etymology as pig in a poke. Uh, so mm. people would buy a pig in a poke. A poke is a bag. A pig is a pig. You think you're buying a pig in a poke. But then what it would be is it would be a shaved cat and they would tell you it's a baby pig. But then if you screwed up the scam, the cat got out of the bag and now you were found out as somebody selling a cat claiming it was a pig in a poke. Uh, Really? Two? This was such a pervasive scam. It got two idioms. Yeah. uh, uh, And possibly, I wonder if the third, the the more than one way to skin a cat is is possible. James Garfield's James Garfield's campaign speech was to go after all of these cat fraudsters. Really? Apparently. No. Okay. I I was like, that seems more recent. There, there are some different suggestions about where there are many ways to more than one ways to skin a cat. One of them might be that cat. Uh, was a southern slang for catfish. Um, so there would be multiple ways to scale a fish. Uh, oh, got it. Skin a cat, uh, scale a fish. Yeah. There's also a possible connection to gymnastics. I'm reading from uh, BND.com. Skinning a cat is an exercise in which athletes pass their legs between their arms while hanging by the hands from a horizontal bar, which might suggest turning an animal's skin inside out. And since there's but since there's only one way to do that exercise, it's actually unlikely. Okay, thank you for putting just a whole paragraph of stuff that doesn't even matter. There we go. Yeah. That's oh. a thing in, in professional wrestling. If, <laughs> if, if, if like the professional wrestler is is hanging like like in like a battle royal, if they have to get thrown out, yeah, and then from the cage, the, yeah, the the the, the, the uh, over the top rope, and like they're about to to touch the floor, but they're holding on to the top rope, and then they like flip up, like that's referred to as skinning the cat. Oh ah. yeah! Wow, um, but I, I would assume so that, there, that probably comes from the from the gymnastics version. A great way to look up, by the way, if you're trying to figure out like origins of stuff, and I've done use this for my books because a lot of etymologies of words come from older books saying this is where the word come from, where they weren't able to research as widely. With Google Books came the ability to go where did this phrase, and I found I've found several times where like. Oh, this word, you know, came out in the 1920s. Like, no, here it is used in the 1870s in this almanac or whatever. It didn't become widely until some other point. So if you go look up like Skin the Cat, you see it mentioned in uh Mark Twain, etc. So if you go, it's a kind of a neat way to go look up stuff is Google Books. Oh, okay. oh, interesting. I knew uh, that Twain was up to something. Yeah. Oh, the Twain, Twain shall meet. Uh so so normally we talk Kevin a bit about brother. productivity, but I I, I guess, mm. you know, it being Thanksgiving week, we can get loosey goosey. Yeah. Um, have have you turkey. guys we eat turkey. figured out the the best way to find photos in your uh, mobile devices history? Like I I I've, I've been able to discover that that like, Ooh. hey, show me pictures from here or from this address or mm-hmm. from this time or maybe maybe with this person but i was trying to find a picture of the new set that we had created for scam nation shoots that looks like a bar mm-hmm. and i suddenly realized well i'm not going to scroll back two months to when i took that photo uh, um you can you can do the map the gps stuff and zoom that's really what far I in use. yeah um, and, and so it'll get precise like like even within like like this side of of let's say an acre property or whatever. It, yes, at, at the very least, it's going to only 
be so it's like if you took a photo two months ago and since then on your photo roll you have taken 250 photos like you've probably only taken 25 of them here right uh and so that'll probably help. a portion of those are screen grabs so it's like uh, uh you can you can more easily get to where you need to go so so what would you ask for or how would you search i would I, just zoom in on the map uh, yeah. You've, you've seen, yeah, you've you've seen the map, right? The photo map. Yeah. How do I even open that? Uh, I, 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 not not that this needs to be tech support with Brian. Yeah. But, there's but, but like that's, that's in the in the photos app. There's uh, it's not up at the front, but it's let me see if I can find it here in uh, albums. Uh, if you oh, scroll you down from five. albums, you go. There's a map thing here, so you can. Um, Got it. Places. Yeah. 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 So it's just uh, it's on it's in the app. I have a catfish update for you. Oh, bring it on. In the winter of 1787, then of the legislature of Pennsylvania, it was signified to me that I might be put in nomination with several others that were about to be balloted for if I thought proper to skin a catfish or do something that would save appearances and justify the society and considered me a man of philosophic search and resources. Whatever that means. 1805. Hmm. Interesting. Hmm. Yeah, um, so I, I, I believe the pig in a poke reference I was making, I think that one is 1600s or Middle Ages or medieval times. Mm. So maybe maybe that's a that's a different uh man, people were getting brazen back then, huh? What's that? Selling cats as pigs. Uh and then oh, just moving I, I, from town to town, uh, shaving. We got a new cats. water pig. Uh yeah, dude. Or yeah. no, a water cat. No, yeah, Wait, uh, which one is it? Pe people were crazy. Uh, Hey, the the whole opening of uh, Stephen Pinker's book, Better Angels of Our Nature, a uh, lot lot of lot of phrases uh, turn out to mean things that mm. Mm, uh, humans were bad, <laughs> okay? yeah. and I'm not going to say we're suddenly good now. I will say we're well fed and generally healthy now, <laughs> and have less interest. Uh, that that was one of the things I found out when we went to the aquarium. Is uh, I asked the question: All them sharks swimming around with all them fish that are kind of food. Why, why aren't the sharks eating the other fish? And they said, because we keep them fed. <laughs> and <laughs> it turns out as long as they have full bellies, sharks don't want to chase down the other fish. Mm. Wow. It's, mm. it's, it's, it's More such than one an way to feed a fish. Yeah, I mean, it, it is very, like, uh, if you ever get the chance, uh, uh, the uh, theory of moral sentiment, um, if you've ever had a chance to read that uh adam smith who did you know wealth of nations but theory of moral <laughs> sentiment was a book that he wrote uh later on which was talks about like you know you know who hasn't looked upon the dangling legs of the beggar hanging from the, the noose in the square and felt some twins of sympathy and you're like some twins. Like, imagine, <laughs> imagine like going to like you know the shopping mall and there's some shoplifter hung and you're like yeah. ah Poor fellow. Anyhow, let's go to Sephora and see what soaps are in. And so, like, <laughs> it is crazy. But I would say that the, the thing that's interesting to me is, like, who were outliers at that time? You look at abolitionists and you look at other people who are like, no, like, uh, you can't be two thirds a person. You're a person. And right. And it's, it, it is a very interesting thing to think, because, like, that, that is that fear that there is just this thin veneer keeping us from being that way. But I'd like to think that there is this that the idea that empathy can at least be taught or communicated in a way that has is able to assert itself is hopeful. I hope. Yeah. Mm. Uh, yeah. I, I don't know. It's, uh, it, it, I, it feels like, uh, we <laughs> can see more people in our lives. We can know and meet more folks with, with the internet and, and social networks and stuff. And I think it's. I I wonder if if we have a better sense of, uh, maybe, objectivity or even relativity compared to other people now versus, twenty or thirty years ago, with with less uh, less social media. You know, do we do we know more about how many crazies are out there because we have we we see them more because we see Karen videos I, I on would, TikTok. I would say that cars and to another extent for a certain demographic planes have probably done more to expand ourselves to different people uh than even social media and i think that, that it's one of those things that the we third don't even... reich felt that way too <laughs> <laughs> expanded right into france <laughs> <laughs> 
I'm sorry, you were saying, Justin? <laughs> Justin, you were, your point was. <laughs> <laughs> just, keep up, just, just take that crank and yeah, get that and get it left. back going. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> what were you saying? It's a fart during the Gettysburg Address, huh? Oh, it's a Gettysburg Address. Yeah. I'm sorry, I didn't yeah. know. I'm yeah. sorry. Yeah, it could have been four score and seven. <laughs> <laughs> Social media, man. What's up? Social media, you know. I don't know what's going on with social media, man. I I just think it's too too many people. It's so many. I'm seeing too many people we, these days. We got a real population bomb happening. Yeah. Oh, holy I, crap. I, I I I want to believe that. I want to believe that our exposure to other people, etc. But that I, the, the reason I did bring that up was that the, the Germans were very well traveled and explorers and had all these things, and yet they still found a way to dehumanize an entire group of people and erase ten million people off the face of the earth. That's my thing. Is like I don't know. I because I, I want to like, but I'm like, we've had this being well traveled. Other people uh, and some people take away different messages. And I know people who would express themselves extremely compassionate, and they'd be like, oh. What do you think we should do about the border? Oh, shoot anybody who wants to cross. Like, wait a second, you know, like like families seeking a better life. And that's the thing that I see that, like, how quickly we cross into this, like when it becomes the other or something. And that's the thing that scares me. Mm. Uh, Dr. Chiron in the chat says, uh, 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 overall, humanity is much better, but there are still some that live uh, that depravity. Um, Twitter just allows us uh, to see too much of it. And I think that that is maybe, uh, not, not, not to reopen that wound, but um, <laughs> the, uh, uh, is either a wonderful or a, a challenging thing about Twitter is like, I, I don't blame anyone who wants to leave the site because it's, there's too much ugly speech. I, um, I was on the um, on on our friend Hammond's podcast a few months ago, um, and we were talking about something similar to this. And I I would like to reposit this observation for the after things crowd. Mm. Um, do you think we will look at the way the paradigms we've got with social media today, or at least uh, call it early social media, Facebook, MySpace, Twitter, what have you, as feeling like oh these are like MMOs. You just threw everybody in the same place and just let them shout all day. Do you think we'll look back on on the ser the services we've got now uh, down the line as as more fragmented, more compartmentalized? Because right now we got kind of just free for all the public square more or less. I, 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 I do think that we're going to see more definition in these things. And I think that we will look at them in, in different ways. Like right now we put Twitter and discord in the same sense. And I, I think going forward, we might say, no, that's more like television. And this is more like radio. And yes, they're all media, but they're not the same. Uh, uh, and you I know who else liked radio, Justin? <laughs> oh, <Jesus. laughs> don't you, don't you count those eggs? <laughs> don't eat that cake. <laughs> you won't oh, have it. You anymore. won't even no. have the cake. I know. Cake, you the cake. That's a final one-one <laughs> whales in the United States. So they uh, died. Class, everybody won. A draw. The fav the favorite way for a sporting <laughs> event to end. A draw. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, yeah. Hitler I, loved the radio. I, <laughs> I did. He was a very big fan of. Adolf he was killed the radio star. Yeah. Uh, but uh, historically, like, yeah, he actually was a person who understood a film and emerging media. Of course, he did, and was would, in, in the way in which he used it. He yeah. would have been on Mastodon, <laughs> cutting edge. Uh, Join my yeah, Mastodon. Is, 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 it, is it the best <laughs> idea to name a service over an animal that went extinct? I mean, birds are still around. Mm. Though there is that, it had a good rain. It had a good run. Dodo Channel with all the animal videos. Yes. I mean, if I called it Velociraptor, would you have the same argument? No, because Velociraptors rule. Yeah, <laughs> and they, awesome. they they still live in our hearts. Yeah, Mastodon. I like rule. how people like we well, you know they were covered with feathers and stuff. Like, still cool, still awesome. So they looked cool. You know, like not a problem. You're not changing my love of Velociraptors. Um. I I do to Bryce's question about like is it is the future going to be you know a a big like 
a bigger, noisier, because even still, we're still somewhat, you know, there's kind of Euro Western Twitter. There's, and there's subsections there within. I wonder, is that going to be far future? Am I going to have like an AI system that I'm like state out my goals? Like, this is what I want. This is what I want to see and control that sort of thing. Uh, are the voices going to be all human and not just, I mean, simple bots being in there too? Like, I don't know. I really, I, I, in all the sort of the future sort of novels that we read that talk about this, they just assume that it's sort of like just one big, huge open forum. Hmm. I guess it comes down to organization mm -hmm. on some level, right? With, with Twitter, I mean, even Twitter, we've talked about the Twitter communities stuff before, but Twitter's like, doing a Google circles slash discord sort of thing uh, or they were, or I don't know if they still are, but they've got that where, where you can have your own moderators moderating a private small community. Yeah. Or, or like a Facebook group as well. Um, I don't know. Maybe, maybe you want to be in little pens. Well, I mean, I think it, it, it you know, the medium is the message. Like, like on Twitter, I want to be very, very close to a gigantic hullabaloo. On Discord, I want to be just amongst my friends. Like there, there <laughs> are as many different ways that we can uh, uh, define a community as there are people that you could put in a community. Every time I hear hullabaloo, I can't stop but thinking of the bear from a jungle book. Oh my god, I was I I was so afraid that you were going to tell me the origins <laughs> of hullabaloo were from <laughs> were from Hitler. Well, did you know Hitler wrote yeah. the, the Jungle Book? Actually, you know, it was initially one. it was initially a, a, a Himmler balloon. <laughs> no, it was Rudyard Kipling wrote it, and we have no connection to Hitler at all. Probably, probably. <laughs> Oh no, Bryce found the picture. He's grasping hands with Hitler. Rudyard <laughs> Rud Kipling. Hitler's holding his hand as he writes to the yeah. <laughs> You see, bare necessities. It's even got Z's in there. Why do you have Z's in there? <laughs> That's a French accent, dude. You did it wrong. I, 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 look, uh, I'm not here to judge. <laughs> um, uh, yeah. So, I. Uh, I uh, 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 any new productivity programs? What, a, what the hell is oh, happening? Oh, Andrew, there's an alarm in your house. My wife is cooking. <laughs> <laughs> All right, it, it's not it? going to uh, get any better. Okay. Okay. All right, let's go. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's the Hitler alarm. Oh, no. <laughs> there is a direction to go there. But <laughs> 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 I was talking about Hitler <laughs> on the After Thing show. Bum, ba, da, bum. <laughs> all right, everybody. Uh, we want to let you all know that we're thankful for you, the dear listeners and Patreon supporters of this program. On this Thanksgiving holiday, we would only ask you that you give us more money uh, uh, because <laughs> we love cash, baby. <laughs> Sweet green. Just kidding. We want you guys to all, not kidding, <laughs> though, give us money. Uh, <laughs> But but also while you're simultaneously doing that, please take uh, account of uh, who you are thankful for in your life. I've uh, been very very <laughs> take thankful. Account. Take I've account. been very very thankful to have these three gentlemen in my life. They have they have mattered a lot to me in in uh, pretty much my entire uh, spanning my entire uh, uh, adolescence to adulthood. And I'm very thankful that we continue to do this show together, boys. Yeah, I'm thankful for yeah. egg number one. Uh, don't numbers. you do oh, it. No, sorry, don't sorry, sorry, you do it. do it. As long as you're calling them eggs. As long as it's a chicken. <laughs> well, he's a chicken when he's, he's counting them for his cake that I'm, he's already I'm going to name yeah. this one Alpha. This one Beta. <laughs> That's okay. Yeah. How's it, how's uh, it been? Or, it's been after. <laughs> I like that you found time to to text all of us in the I know, middle of that yeah. Andrew. <laughs> like, hey, you know the low hanging fruit that we all walked by? I just wanted to let you all know that this this fruit, baby, it is whoa. <laughs> like uh, Sorry, my, my phone was in my pocket. Oh yeah. <laughs> uh, open it for a fun oh, surprise. <laughs> It's the world's worst fortune cookie. <laughs> In bed. <laughs> right, emphasizing a need that sometimes you need a network and then a network when you want to say like, oh, this is horrible. Um, <laughs> and then I'm going to say the thing that everybody wanted to say, but nobody will say. So I'll just say it. Oh. And a privacy. Mm. 
<laughs> well, uh, thank you everybody for joining us here yeah. on the Weird Things After Things. We'll be back in uh, in in only two hours with Cord Killers. Cord Killers gonna be a little early today. No, yeah. one hour. When is that show? Is uh, it six central? Yeah, so, we'll be back in two hours. Two hours. Le- less than two hours. Less than, less two, than two hours. hours. Uh, Andrew Andrew Maine on the stuff. Justin Robert Young on the stuff. Everybody on the stuff. On the stuff. Bye bye. Who else is on the stuff? <laughs> oh. oh, Andrew's on the stuff. Oh, he's Andrew's on the stuff. He's gone. <laughs> what the fuck?